So today we're looking at a pretty massive 3D printer made by Elegoo and it's the Neptune 3 Max which has a build volume of 420 by 420 and 500 millimeters tall. And for reference you guys can see we got a Benchy and a calibration cube there and you see how large these other models are. So before we look at the prints, let's check out some of the features that this printer has. So starting up here, we can see this is our spool holder. It mounts down to this upper frame. All the frame members are metal. We got the filament detector that swivels around. There's a little light there. Dual Z axes that are tethered with a belt. These rods that help stabilize the gantry. Not too much going on back here. Just the end stop switch for the Y. Pretty clean. On the side here, we got our power cable that comes in. On and off switch, it is fused. Going back to the front, here we can see our direct drive hot end extruders. So this is an all in one built unit. We got the feed up here. It's the release arm. Everything's pretty nice quality. We got a gear here. We can see the flow. The extruder motor is inside. And it is direct drive. We got dual cooling fans on each side. And underneath, you guys can see we got a silicone sock. And yeah, very nice construction. And that's our inductive sensor for the Z axis. Pretty clean here all around. Also here it says create the feature on both sides. Here's our adjuster for the X axis belt. And we also got one for the Y on the bottom, which if you guys can maybe see, the belt is larger than normal. We have a very large PEI sheet that's flexible and magnetic that pops right off. It is amazing to have, especially for these larger prints as you can pop them off quite easy after you print them. The only thing about this is that lining it up in the back is a little hard as there's no tabs to butt against so you kind of have to line it up but it's not a big deal just takes a little bit more effort so going down you guys can see the printer is pretty low profile it's got nice large squishy feet on four corners we got the manufacturing label here and right below that we have a little cubby or a drawer and that's actually quite large you can see you can easily fit the snippers in there and things like that extra parts and tools and out of the three neptune printers the max is the only one that has this drawer which i thought the neptune plus should probably have this too but yeah the max has it. it's very nice useful drawer so very clean here up front we got usb connection to your computer micro sd card slot goes upside down and then our connector to the screen here that mounts on the right side and you can pull it off and use it it is magnetic on the back quite useful and we'll take a look at it here in a second. You guys can see this is where it mounts here. And underneath, guys, you can see the heated platform, which is this aluminum. And then we are insulated on the bottom. And we got three rollers on each side. And they are adjustable, you guys can see. And also we got three adjuster knobs for the bed. Now, something to note about leveling this bed out manually is that the two stationaries in the middle are fixed. And then you got just these corners that adjust on the knobs. So what you want to do is you want to start off with the middle and then adjust out. 
if you guys can see there in the middle, it's a hard point, so there's no adjustment there to the frame. It only adjusts on the edges. So if that makes sense, start with the middle and go to the edge with your manual adjustment, and then you can do the out of bed leveling to tune it out, which mine tuned out super well, and the differences between every edge is very small. All right, so let's take a quick look at the screen. So you guys can see there's a little emanation. It's actually dimmed down right now, and if I touch it, it gets brighter, so that's a nice feature. So everything is pretty basic. As you would expect in the print, you will print your files, which will read the SD card here. In prepare, we got move. And down here, we got the different settings, temperature. We got preheat and extruder controls. So very simple, very easy to use. So here you have your settings with language control, temperature settings, which you can set your, let's say PLA, you want to set it at a certain parameter. You can do that here. Also light control, which I forgot to totally mention. That it does have a nice bright LED light here that shines down. So I'm going to leave it off for now as it's a little too bright for filming. Fan control, motor off, so this releases the motors. Filament detection on and off. I guess my detection was off. Interesting. Factory settings and about the machine. We can see the build volume there, firmware and stuff like that. And advanced settings, which lets you also dim down your display if you want to. And you can turn off the sounds so it doesn't make them when you click on things. Also motor settings, speed settings, and resume printing is on also, which by the way is quite an important feature for printing spiralized mode like we did this vase. So you do want to turn resume printing off and you can actually do that in the menu as you're printing in the control panel there. So yeah guys, overall quite straightforward printer. You know, if you've seen a printer before, this will all make sense to use. And <laughs> assembly was pretty much exactly the same as the Neptune Plus. So if you want a more detailed video of the same printer, just downsized, check out that video. So another thing to consider is the size of this thing. So let's measure it here. Now you do have to remember that the bed does go past the printer on the rail. So it goes almost probably to here. So we're gonna measure around from the end there. And to the front looks like we have about 32 inches that you'll need for sure clearing this knob here. So we got 32 inches deep. So for the width, you do need some room here for this guy and the cables. So we're gonna go about three and a half inches a little extra past the body. And with our edge of the screen, we got 28 inches. So yeah, and if we hold the tape up here, as you guys can see, they were practically at 38 inches. It's kind of hard to see on camera, but, but me eyeballing it here with my eyes, it's about 38. So yeah, keep in mind that if you do want to own this thing, you gotta make room for it or have the room to set it and have it occupy the space. And you don't want to end up buying this printer and then not being able to fit it anywhere. Yeah, what's crazy is that you can't really tell here on video probably how large this printer is, but you know, scaling it to these guys here, just looking at the benchy, you can see how large that vase is. So yeah, this is a very large format printer, and I think this is probably the largest I ever used, which was quite an eye-opener of what you could print. So everything was printed in PLA. 0.2 layer height on the stock nozzle made me realize after I started printing these things that I should probably upgrade the nozzle to a 0.6 maybe even a 0.8 to print larger prints as these will take quite a bit of time like the vase didn't take too long as it is just one layer but these other prints here especially this guy here took over 40 hours to print and I didn't print very fast only about 60 to 80 millimeters a second to have a more nicer finish so let's look at the large prints here first and then we'll go to the small ones so this is the vase and this is the full height that this printer can print so I noticed that after it went all the way up it could go probably a few more millimeters maybe like five to eight so that's a plus as it could definitely do 500 millimeters tall and it was printed in rainbow filament that's why you guys can see the color change which turned out really good so on the bottom you guys can probably see the reflection now, because I upsized these so much, the original models became more blocky and that's why you see kind of like these lines and stuff. But overall, the printer did very well and the layers went down very nicely. And as we went up here, we had a little bit more funny things going on, but still very nice. And what's cool is that it's very solid for one layer. You guys can see in there inside. Definitely a cool print, very large, very nice. The bottom was extremely even, which surprised me how well this bed leveled out. It was literally perfect as the bead went down. So yeah, that is in spiralized mode and you will need to turn off the resume printing in the settings to print spiralized because if you don't, the, your nozzle is going to pause as it goes around. And it is fun to print these large prints because they don't take much time and you get a pretty large model in reasonably short time. So here we have FlexiBot and this guy turned out pretty good as he was just laying down, printed just like that. And this also didn't take too long, but it did take a little bit. And you guys can see it looks great. It's got some flexibility in it. 
yeah just a fun print to print also and quite large and could be very fun for the kids or just hanging on the wall because he is flat you can kind of put him anyhow you want and permanently mount him somewhere as a decorative piece or something so yeah pretty cool print here and by the way you can find all these prints on the internet on thingiverse.com so so our other <laughs> large print is right here and this thing is quite massive and i printed a bunch of these before it's like a lizard thing and yeah there's a lot of retractions here because he's made out of these holes everywhere and you guys can see it turned out very well it did take a long time to print as we do have a small nozzle now one thing i did not take in consideration as i upscaled them there's going to be a much bigger or larger distances between the overhangs here and we kind of had some droopage in there on the stringing a little bit so and also inside there not terrible it still turned out fine this filament ended up being a little bit more stringy than i wanted to so a lot of retractions but overall looks pretty awesome so this did take about 40 hours to print and just a large super cool print that is definitely a nice little showpiece in a room or any kind of 3d printing collections and so for the last three prints we got a little buddha a benchy and a calibration cube and these were actually the first prints i printed and the Buddha came with the printer, and then I sliced these two here. So let's check out the Buddha. Turned out really nice. So since we didn't slice this, I don't know exactly the parameters, but it does look like a 0.2. And yeah, it's quite clean. And very nice layer adhesion and smooth. And on the black here, you can see very well how layers sit, and they're pretty much perfect. So yeah, very happy with how that turned out. Here we have the calibration cube, which we'll be able to see better how our layers sit. So here we have the X. So there is a little bit of ringing and quite a bit of ghosting there. So probably need to tighten up my belt a bit maybe or loosen it as that seems a little more than usual. Then we have the Y, which is this very large bed and actually looks pretty good for how large the bed is. So also a little bit of ringing and some ghosting, but not bad at all. Here we have the X wall. There's a little bit of artifacts on the edge. And the Y wall, which is quite nice, except for a little bit of ringing. And then we got the Z looking good, and the bottom also looks great. And this PEI sheet holds everything very well. When it's hot and then when it cools off, it just pops right off. Here we have the Benchy, also turned out great. You can kind of see by the layers there. Very nice and smooth overall. There's a little bit of ghosting again around this area. We got our Z seam here. Also kind of something funny here. But other than that, looks pretty good. Quite a bit of ghosting on the Y. You can kind of see it all over the back with the Benchy also. Not terrible, but it is there. Same thing for the X there. So yeah, a little bit of ghosting on this printer. But the layers went down beautifully and precisely. And as far as that goes, everything looks perfect. So yeah, overall this printer is a great value. Not only because, you know, it's a very large volume and you pretty much get all the modern features, but it is put together by Elegoo and designed. So they do a great job with the more important things and it makes them work very well. So I think it'll be hard to beat the Neptune 3 Max here for value as the dollar per volume you get is quite impressive. Now these printers are kind of hard to get, any of them, especially the Plus and the Max here, as it seems like Elegoo is just ramping them up and, and the demand is much higher than they thought. And it makes sense why these are great printers for a great price. So the Max here is under 500 bucks and the other ones are even their better deals. So even if you want something smaller with all the same features in the design, the Neptune 3 Pro is a great choice and very, very budget friendly. And obviously the Plus bumps it up to 320 by 320 and the Max to 420 by 420 and 500 tall. So yeah. In any case, guys, so this is the Neptune 3 Max. It's an excellent printer if you want a large one and you won't be disappointed with the volume as you could do crazy prints here. So for more detailed assembly and overview, check out the Neptune Neptune 3 Plus video and also the Neptune 3 Pro for that smaller volume. So if you are interested in any of these printers, all the links will be in the description. Check it out. And if you did enjoy this video, then hit that like button. If you enjoy videos like this and 3D printing stuff, stay tuned for more. And also check out the playlist as I have quite a few printers I reviewed and I'm sure you'll find something interesting there. So as always, thanks for watching the videos and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.